Hey guys, once again welcome back in our video series of C programming by Tech Booster. So guys, in this video we will learn about arrays. And array in C programming is one of the most important topic in this video series. So first of all, we need to understand what is an array. So this is a definition. An array is a collection of elements of similar data type. So what do we mean by this one? Before understanding array, let us move back and talk a little bit about our variable. Why do we need variable? Variable is basically used to store any of your data. But a single variable can store only single data. But if you consider array, array is also a type of variable. But this can store multiple elements of similar data type. For example, if you want to store different values, like if you have a class where you have 100 students and if you want to store the name and roll number of each and every student, in that case, if you consider variable, you will have to consider 200 variables, 100 variables for their names and 100 variables for their roll number. Just imagine the scenario, how will the program look like where you will be having 200 different variables. Although you will not have any error, your program will run successfully, but that particular thing is not suggestible here. You may forget the name of your variables or you may have many different things while running your program. So in order to tackle those things, we have our arrays. Array can give you those particular solutions. So here in this video, we'll learn about arrays and how to create your array and how to use it in your program. So now let's move forward and check out the syntax of an array. So you can see this is our syntax. This is the way how you can create an array. First of all, you need to consider the data type. As from the definition you can see, arrays can hold element of similar data type. Like here if you consider int, in that case your array will be able to store only integer values. If you consider character, your array will store only characters. If you consider float, it will store only floating values. So your data type is very important here. Then you need to use a space and then name of your array. You can consider any name just like the name of your variable and then you need to use this square bracket and within this square bracket you need to consider the size of your array that is how many elements you want to store in this particular array. So this is the way how you can create an array. Then if you want to manually enter your elements in your array in that case you can use this equal sign and then you can consider this curly bracket where you can manually write all the elements. Like here in this case if you consider the size of your array to be 8, you need to consider 8 different elements. So this is the way how you can enter elements manually. We will check out everything in a code block, don't worry. Now if I consider this particular example, int arr, here AR, arr is the name of my array, you can consider anything here and then within this square bracket I have 8, that is my this particular array will be able to store 8 integers. Now you can see, these are my 8 integers. I have considered 8 integers here. So in this way, you can consider any integer value. Now we need to understand another important thing. That is your index value. What is your index value? You can see, this is my index or we can also call it as position. Here, while considering your array, for each and every element, you need to work with their index value, that is their position. And in our C programming, our index value will always start from your 0. Here, my index value will not start from 1. You need to be careful with this one. Here, I have only 8 elements. There's a reason my ending index position or index value is your 7 because this is starting with 0. Now, as you have 8 index positions here, if you want to fetch any element from this array, like if you want to get any element from this array, you need to work with that particular index position. For example, here in this case, if I want to get this particular value 54, how do I need to write my line? So here in this case, you need to consider your array that is a double r in my case and then within this square bracket, I need to consider my index position. My index position is 2 here. And once you run your program, you will have your output 54. Similarly, if you want to have your element 12, in that case, here my index position is 3. So I need to consider my index position 3. So this is the way how you can get your elements. And once you have your elements, you can work on it. Now, let me just open my code block and show you all these things. So this is my code block. 
here I've already created a file named as array underscore one. Now we'll start with our header file. That is your include stdio.h. Okay. Now this is my main function. And here we'll have our code. So first of all, I need to consider my data type. Here I'll be considering integer and then let me consider the name of my array let it be a double r let me consider mark instead of considering a double r this may this may again create some confusion for you i will consider five defined marks so here the size of my array mark is five then let me consider manual input so let my marks be like 54 then it, it use comma 56 87 90 99 and then 78 so these are my five elements now once you are done with your array if you want to print those values in that case similarly you can use your print function print f function so here this is my print f function now here as I have considered in test my data type so here my format specifically percentage D then here if you want to display like your second value 56 in that case you need to consider mark when within this square bracket you need to consider 1 because here my index position is 1 so this is the way how you can fetch any of your elements like if you want to fetch all the elements in that case what basically I will do I will write 0 I will just copy this particular line see and then I'll just paste it okay so here I have 0 then this will be your 1 this will be your 2 this will be your 3 this will be your 4 okay so these are my index positions and here as I have not used slash m so I'll be having all my values in a single line but if you want to use space or if you want to get space between your elements you can use a space here so let me use a space now once done I'll just return 0 and once you run your program you can see here you can see these are our values that is your 54 56 87 90 and 99 okay so here you can see we have considered another value 78 but the size of my array is 5 so now let me show you if you want to print print f percentage d and now let me consider my fifth index position okay so now if you run your program now before running your program uh, I will allow you to guess whether you will get this particular value 78 or not if I run this one you can see you will not get this particular value 78 here what you are getting is 0 because if I talk about this particular array this can store only five values so this is storing all the five values that is your index position 0 1 2 3 and 4 so this particular value that you are giving here as your manual input this value has not been stored in that particular address value or address position basically what we have learned before all our values are stored in a particular memory location or all our memory location have particular address but this particular value has not been stored in any of our memory location so you need to be careful with this one now I will just clear this value now this is the way how you can create your array manually now let me show you if you want to allow your users to enter any values from their end in that case what will be your procedure so I'll just modify this particular program so here in this case what I will do I'll just print my message enter the mark of first subject okay so what we're doing we're allowing our users to enter mark of each and every subject so this is my scanf that is to store our values here my format specifier will be percentage D because I have considered my data type as integer now comma and then with your address operator you need to consider mark 
0. So here you need to consider mark 0 to store your first value. So I will just copy this one. So this is the way how you can allow your users to enter values from their end. Control V, Control V, Control V and Control V. So this will be my second subject. This will be my third subject. This will be my fourth subject. And this will be my fifth subject. Similarly, I need to change my index positions. This will be your 1, this will be a 2, this will be your 3 and this will be your 4. Okay, so now all our values will be stored. Now if you want to display all your values or if you want to display the mark of your subjects, in that case, again, we need to print our mark. So I will just copy this particular line again. Okay, so the mark of first subject the mark of first subject is percentage D comma and then here I will have my mark 0 okay so this will give me my mark of first subject I need to use and to close my inverted comma here you need to close all the inverted commas or else you will get an error okay so I am done. I will again copy this particular line as I want to display the mark of other subjects as well. Okay. So this will be your second C C O N T. This will be your third. This will be your fourth. And this will be your fifth. And this will be your one. 2, 3 and 4. Okay. Now let me use slash n here in order to print all my values in new line. So here what I'll do. Okay. So let me use this one here and a slash n here. Slash n. So again, 2 slash n. Slash n. Slash n and again slash n so let me use this is2 here again in order to make our output little more clear okay so i am done now what i'll do i'll just clear this value because these are my manual inputs and once done if you run this particular program if i run this program i will have to allow user to enter all the marks so this is the mark of my first subject let it be 55 then 66 77 88 and 99 now once you press enter you can see mark of first subject is 55 mark of second subject is 66 77 88 and 99 so guys this is the way how you can allow your users to enter value for a particular array now here in this case what we have done we have just considered all our marks there is a mark for each and every subject but as we have only five subjects here so what we have done we have just copied each and every line and we have allowed our users to enter mark for each and every subjects manually but consider the case like if you have around 20 subjects in that case what you will have to do you will have to copy these lines again for another 15 times so that will be tough for us so in order to get rid of this one what we will do we will use our for loop here and in your coming time in most of the cases you will be using for loop so now let me show you how to use your for loop here so again what I'll do, I'll just modify this particular program. So let me just clear all these things. And here again I have considered 5 subject. So now I'll be starting with my for loop. So let me consider an integer i and our starting value here will be 0. Then i less than 5 and i plus plus. Okay. Now here in this case. What I have done, I have considered my index position as 0 and then I am incrementing it by 1. So this for loop will valid till my value of i is 4. Once the value of i is 5, you will be out of this particular loop. Now here what I will do, basically I will again allow my users to enter mark but in a different way. So what I will do, printf 
enter sorry enter mark of subject percentage d okay so here what i'm doing i'm allowing my users or what is my displaying message here enter mark of subject one so this will be my subject one so what i will do here in place of my percentage d i'll print i plus one because my initial value of i is zero so zero plus one it will be your one now what i will do i'll use scan f and again percentage d then comma your address operator and then mark within the square bracket you will have your i okay so this will do our job now if you have 20 subjects 100 subjects that does not matter you just need to consider your ending condition and accordingly you will be able to enter mark of each and every subject now once you have the mark if you want to display your output again we'll consider another for loop here for let me consider again int i equals to 0 i less than 5 and i plus plus now what i'll do i'll just print my value so here again i will use print f mark of subject percentage d is percentage d so now here my first value will be your i plus 1 comma mark i okay i am done now if you run this particular program let me run this one so here first of all okay here i have an error so i have used a comma here this will be a semicolon now once you run this one first of all you will have to enter mark of subject 1 so let it be again 55 subject 2 66 subject 3 77 subject 4 88 subject 5 99 so once you press enter you can see again i have not considered slash n here that's the reason i'm having all my outputs in single line let me use a slash n here slash n that is your new line now again if i run my program let it be your 55 66 77 88 99 so once you press enter you can see these are my output mark of subject 1 is 55 subject 2 is 66 77 88 and 99 now this is the use of our for loop and in most of your cases you will be using this for loop because for loop always helps us in executing less number of line now once this particular thing is clear we'll move forward towards adding two different arrays now here i'll be considering two different arrays and we'll try to add their value and store it in another array so i'll be having three different arrays so for that let me just create a new file now let me save it by the name array 2 array underscore 2 okay so i'll just zoom this one out now again we'll have to start with our header file include stdio.h then we'll be having our main function okay so here again i will have to consider three different arrays so let me consider my first array to be a sorry let me consider the size to be three let me consider second one to be b3 and as i'll be storing my value in c the size of c will also be three okay now i'll be using for loop here so for loop let me consider another variable i okay so here i'm considering i as my global variable in my previous example what i have done i have considered i as my native variable you can see here in this case i considered i as my native variable but here in this case this is my global variable so i need not use this int or data type again i can directly start with my initial value zero then your i less than three again i plus plus okay so here what i'll do now you can directly store your values uh, that is without allowing your users 
to enter or without printing your the uh, like input message let me print my input message that will be more clear for my user enter three values okay so my users will enter three values so here i'll use scan f scan f percentage d i'll use say um comma my address operator and then your a i okay so this is my array a again i'll copy this one for my array b okay so again here this will be your b so once we are done what we can do here i can just use another for loop to print my values because printing my value will make it more clear so here i'll just clear this particular line scan f and i'll just use percentage d space comma a i okay so this will do here this is my enter another three values this is my b i'll again copy this one and i will paste it here you know to display my values for b so once you have your a and b now you can consider another loop for your c where you will just add all the elements of a and b so again i will be having my initial value as 0 i less than 3 comma i plus plus so now here in this case what i will do i have my c here so i will directly consider c i is equals to a i plus b i okay so this will give me all my values of c and now if you want to print your c again i'll copy this particular loop and i'll use it here as c okay so i am done so now if you run this particular program i need to use return here return zero so once i'm done you can run this one and once you run hopefully we'll have our output so here enter three values let it be your 10 20 and 30 okay so here i have not used um my display method is not proper here although i will have my output let it be again 20 and 30 now if i press enter my output should be 20 40 and 60 so once you press enter you can see your output is 20 40 and 60 this is my output 20 40 and 60 but my display method is not proper here so what I'll do here in this case, um, this is, I'll just take out this particular line. I'll use it here. I'll take out this particular line. I'll use it here. And here in this case, this will be my first message. Then I will have all my values. Okay, so these are my values. So here I will be printing my values. And after printing my values, I will use another print F here. And here I will just create a new line. So again, here in this case, I will create a new line and okay so now if I run my program I happen to slay a semicolon here I happen to use semicolon here semicolon is compulsory so now if you run your program I'll have to enter value it will be 10 20 and 
30 so you can see these are my three values 10 20 30 then again let me consider 10 20 and 30 and now your output is 20 40 and 60 so guys this is the way how you can work with multiple arrays and i hope now your array is clear so guys with this i'll be winding this video here in my next video i'll show you how to work with multi-dimensional arrays this is my single dimensional array in my next video we'll work with two dimensional and three dimensional array so guys now you need to practice and i'll see you in my next video till then goodbye and take care bye bye